backside 50-50 is always difficult. But did you know there's a way to put it off without an ollie? This is a perfect trick if you're tired, injured, or hangover. I mean, look how little energy I'm using. We'll see how this trick works in a minute, but basically, you just have to lift the nose and step on it and let the tail lock in. First thing first, this is not the traditional slappy grind. In fact, it's easier and has a lot of possibility. This time, we'll discuss a slappy grind that you step on the tail and lift the nose. Learning this trick will help you get used to the feeling of a grind trick and opens up to so many other tricks. For example, if you push the nose more, it becomes a crooked grind. Or a willy grind if you keep the tail low. Nose grind, add a little twist and combine it with a tail slide. Knowledge of it comes in easily as your front foot is already on the nose. And the front side, which I think is way harder than the back side. Y'all can why the trick, please subscribe. You might want Ollie into backside 50 50, but it's difficult at first. On the other hand, this trick, let's call it a slappy grind to make it simple, it requires only one skill which is lifting the nose by stepping on the tail and transferring your weight on the nose as you descend. You can lock in on a wide range of obstacles as long as the nose can reach the top of it. And the good thing about this trick is that it does not require a curve with its slanted size and is lower than the nose, as is often seen in slappy tutorials. However, there is a knack in this trick. If you simply try to lock in by transferring your weight, you may slip off or fail to lock in properly. First off, let's compare Slappy Grind's approach with a 50-50 grind that you ollie. When you ollie in, the approach angle is much closer to parallel to the obstacle. You can continue grinding if the inertial force acting on your body parallels the obstacle after locking in. In the case of Sloppy, on the other hand, you should secure around 30 to 40 degrees of an angle when you lock in. You may approach parallel to the obstacle when you're still distance from it. Just before locking in, turn to get the angle you need. The most crucial reason for angling the approach is that it helps you keep your board under you. Please imagine it this way. By having your board bump against the obstacle, it momentarily slows down while your body keeps on moving in the same direction. Let's see what it means using 3D models. By angling the approach, your body will move toward the obstacle, and the toe side wheels will catch it when your body rises up. Upon locking in, while the wheels catch the obstacle and stops the board from moving in the same direction, your body continues doing so due to inertia. Using this difference, you can keep your weight above your board more efficiently. There is one more reason for having such a big angle. It also helps you put your weight on the nose more easily. Keeping your weight forward and on the opposite side of the obstacle before you lock in shortens the distance you have to move your body weight to lock in. If you approach parallel to the obstacle, nothing stops their board's horizontal movement. In other words, it does not cause the difference between the speed of your board and body. With your board not slowing down relative to your body's speed, the distance you have to move your body weight becomes longer. And the longer you have to move your body weight, the more difficult this trick becomes. So, if you think you can't lift the tail, Remember how the approach angle can cause this difference, and find the best angle for you. Once you get the approach right, it's time to lock in. When locking in, the toe side wheels should catch the coping. By catch, 
I mean, the wheel's inner side should touch the obstacle's side. The big approach angle causes a centrifugal force on your body and tries to shoot it outward. So, the inner side of the wheels must catch the coping to get the repulsive force from the obstacle so you can align the board's direction with the obstacle's direction. Due to these reasons, I recommend placing your feet in a way that you can put your weight on your toes. And of course, since this is a slappy grind where you lift the nose by stepping on the tail, you should place your feet on the nose and the tail respectively. Once you get your feet in the right place, get close enough to the obstacle and shift your weight on the toe side of the front foot. If you're not angled enough or trying to lock in too far away, it will be difficult to properly shift your weight on the nose. So make sure to shift your weight after getting close enough to where you want to lock in. And locking in is not the end of this trick. Always keep in mind that the direction of the obstacle is not the same as the board's direction. As the approach angle and the direction of the obstacle differ, if you just put your weight on the nose, you will end up riding up on the obstacle. So push your board slightly in the same direction as the obstacle and help it become parallel to it. And now, finally, once you put your weight on the nose, all that remains is to lift the tail. Pull your back foot toward the heel so that the toe side of the rear truck also catches the coping. And during grinding, there's very little to do. Keep your weight in the middle and relax. And this is the best part, isn't it? You can enjoy the feeling of metal trucks grinding 10 centimeters below your feet without a sweat. If you like this video, I think I'll show you how to do some variations of this trick. For example, Crooked Grind feels really good. Please let me know in the comment section below if you have any suggestions or comments. And that's all for this episode. Thank you so much for watching as always. Until next time.